Pet insurance can cover unexpected bills and in some cases routine wellness expenses. But policies vary significantly in price and coverage. So what do you need to consider? Joining us now with tips is Roseanne Freitas, Public Relations and Communications Manager with the Better Business Bureau. Good morning again, Roseanne. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Christine. So we're talking about pet insurance today, and much like insurance for humans, pets have different types of policies. So how do these plans work? Well, that's the key, is understanding that there are different options out there. So the ones that we have seen are the accident-only coverage. And that only offers the reimbursement if it is some sort of accident, um, ingesting a toxin or even a broken bone. Then you have the option of accident and illness. So it takes that original accident policy, and now you're adding in some of those illnesses, uh, genetic conditions or cancers that your dog may or any type of pet may have. And then you have the comprehensive coverage, which now takes that accident, that illness, and any chronic conditions and also can look at some preventative care. But when it comes to some of those routine visits, you can also look at an add-on to that policy and that will cover those wellness, the vaccinations, um, annual wellness exam, and even the flea and tick um, prevention. So every company offers a different plan and it's really to understand what those plans offer and make sure you're comparing the same thing on them. So if someone is thinking about getting a plan, what do they need to consider? First of all, the company that you're going to engage with. So you want to verify that this is a legitimate company. We talk about that a lot. Um, you can also check out at the BBB.org and look at any rec or recommendations, reviews, complaints, or anything about that business. And then determine how much coverage you're going to need by looking at the pet's breed, their age, and of course, the family history of that animal. And of course, our financial status is going to make a big difference, whether we could pay a significant bill, and of course, understanding what the deductible would be on that. What tips compare can prices. you... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Christy. Okay. I was going to say, compare prices and plans, mm -hmm. um, and always read about those that fine print, the deductibles, the payout limits, and any re reimbursement. And discounts, ask if they have a multi-pet discount, if the animal spayed or neutered, or even a military discount. And then, of course, check with your own home and in car insurance company and see if they offer it as well. What tips can you give for those who do purchase pet insurance and those who don't buy it? So if you are buying the pet insurance, do it when your pet is young before they have any of those health issues arise. And then understand there's a waiting period. So when you go see the vet, you will need to pay the vet and then you will wait to be reimbursed. So there will be that time lag there. And if you're unable to afford that pet insurance, consider alternatives. One is set up a dedicated emergency fund and put money into it so you're saving should anything arise. And then do that preventive wellness that keeps that pet healthy, which is spay or neuter the pet, or in, and apply that monthly tick and flea medicine as well. All right. All good tips. Thank you so much, Roseanne. What all pet owners need to know. Thank you, Christine.